Hey there, Dr. Houston Anderson here. Want to go over some of the basics of estrogen today. Now, estrogen is one of my favorite topics to talk about because it plays such a huge role in the female body, especially. And you'll find that oftentimes in my office, I'm more predominantly female oriented because that's who's going to come into the office because they have this estrogen to a large degree, much more than men have it. Um, so unless you're a rare male, that over uh, aromatizes and creates high levels of estrogen, you may not have a lot of the health conditions that a female has. That being said, females all have high levels of estrogen and that's what makes them who they are. Um, and, and that's what we kind of want to go over today. So estrogen, I always like to start out with the good because we, we, we will later demonize estrogen and say how bad it is, but we want to talk about some of the roles that it plays. And honestly, it really is the good hormone in the body that makes women feel a lot of what they want to feel as far as if your mood uh, has been altered because of hormones or anything like that. Estrogen is often the one that we need to get to where you're feeling again or otherwise you need to be sensitive to your estrogen again so that you can have some of those joyful moments, some of the, the happiness that, that may have changed in your moods. Um, that being said, it's not just moods that it alters. So estrogen is going to be the biggest player in, in a lot of the symptoms that might come with a menstrual cycle. So let's go over some of these things. So number one on the list, we have estrogen is the female hormone, right? So it's it's extremely important for the female body. It's absolutely necessary, uh, but balance is important. The brain in the female is extremely sensitive to estrogen levels uh, from puberty until about 50 years of age. After 50 years of age, you'll find that that sensitivity starts to drop. And with that, you'll see some of the changes that people would talk about with the big change or menopause. Um, so it's important to know that, that estrogen does play a huge role in your personality. It plays a, whole, a huge role in how you feel on a day-to-day -day basis. And so we'll kind of go through some of those things. Estrogen increases oxytocin, which is love and affiliation. So oftentimes people may feel less love or less, less affiliation or less, um, less drawn towards a partner or something like that. If the estrogen balance is off, oxytocin obviously, um, is, is a reward hormone, um, but it's also more of the falling in love. That's the, that's the euphoria that you might feel when you meet a new partner and, and you're falling in love and you know you can stay up all night and you never have fatigue. That's oxytocin running the body. Um, with estrogen increases, uh, so estrogen increases dopamine, which is kind of the pleasure and reward story. So if you were to look and say, okay, if I have low estrogen or better put, most often everyone has high estrogen, but it's usually that they become estrogen resistant. Now there's no longer as much drive to go and accomplish a task because the reward, the chemical reward in the brain is much less. So there's much less satisfaction. Maybe previously having, oh, I don't know, accomplishing a task at work, um, gave you great satisfaction and now you don't find that satisfaction anymore. Maybe um, if you stay at home, maybe you know simply vacuuming your house was enough to make you satisfied and happy and, and now it just seems like it's just another chore. It doesn't matter how nice the house looks, there's just more to do. Um, you, you're lacking the satisfaction from accomplishment, um, which can be uh, an estrogen resistance type story. Um, what else? Uh, produces female characteristics such as breasts and hips. So this is how we develop. So we don't want to say that we don't need it, um, but it is the thing that um, in, increases, um, you know, essentially when puberty occurs at a young age, um, this is what makes things develop. So you'll find that depending on how much estrogen you have in your body, you'll have different body shapes. So some women obviously are more prone to, to carrying a higher load of estrogen as a general characteristic. Um, and you'll also notice this specifically um, that estrogen, when it's elevated, creates weight gain, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But you'll see if with regards to breasts and hips, you'll notice when someone gets pregnant and those estrogen levels goes up, go up, um, you'll find that, you know, the breasts and the hips change or alter thing in that direction. So it's, it's one of those important hormones. It's actually one of the main reasons why females are able to have babies and men are not because estrogen creates a certain type of reaction that just cannot happen in the male body. Um, estrogen buffers mood and keeps you on task. So um, there, there are some benefits to estrogen there. Estrogen increases libido. So desire, um, once again, satisfaction, pleasure, reward, um, all governed somewhat to a large degree by, by estrogen. 
Um, so obviously it controls a lot that has to do with libido, desire, or even being in the quote unquote mood. Um, and so that's something that we'll cover a lot. We'll do a whole section on libido because I know that it's something that a lot of, um, uh, people struggle with as, especially as they age, not usually is so much of an issue between 20 and say 40 years old. After 40 years old, it seems that it's a common, um, concern in the office. Estrogen is what makes you fun, flirty, and female. Um, I say think of the teenage years. So not every female is going to be flirty and bubbly and silly all the time. Um, but if I look at the average teenage female, there's a lot more giggling going on. There's a lot more flirtatious behavior. Um, it's what makes you want to have fun 24-7. So if, if those are things that you had at some point in your life, not everyone kind of really reacts that way. But if that's something that, that you you uh, enjoyed previously and uh, you you liked that part of your life and you've noticed that that the ability, the flirtation ability, the ability to have fun, the ability to laugh or, or react positively to any, any situation, uh, if that's kind of disappeared, oftentimes it's because the estrogen balance has changed. Um, estrogen, the bad. So we'll kind of, you know, at this point in time, we'll probably blame most of the bad things in your life with regards, with regards to hormone balance on estrogen, but there's more to it. Um, but, but, but you can definitely know that, that estrogen is playing a role in almost all negative female symptoms. So estrogen is the cause of most menstrual symptoms. If you think cramping, bloating, breast tenderness, PCOS, all of those conditions, um, excessive, excessive bleeding with menstrual cycles, things like that. Um, estrogen is at the root of these things and it's something that we have to get to. Uh, estrogen causes altered menstrual cycles. So probably the most common cause of, uh, uh, varying menstrual cycles. So maybe you're at 20 days and then you're at 32 days and then you're back to 26 days or even even maybe a small fluctuation between 28 and 32 days or something like that. If it's inconsistent, um, then it's likely that estrogen is causing a lot of that inconsistency. Um, estrogen causes you to retain uh, salt and water. Looks like I'm missing a D there. But essentially, you'll notice that you, you gain weight as your in estrogen increases. So you look bloated, you feel like you're puffy, things like that. Estrogen causes that. And in, in that note, that's one of the reasons why breast tenderness occurs. So the breasts contain a lot of estrogen. Um, and in fact, for every estrogen molecule, you'll, you'll retain four molecules of water. So as uh, your estrogen increases with your menstrual cycle, your water can quadruple, which just causes a pressure. Um, so if, if you're someone that already has elevated estrogen, you may have uh, breast tenderness, you know, all the time. Uh, and Or if you're someone that has uh, an elevated baseline and has an increase even later, then you're the person that suffers from uh, significant breast tenderness versus someone that has a minor or fluctuating, you know, tolerable level. Next, we'll find that estrogen actually creates progesterone receptors, or maybe a better way to put that is actually that they modulate progesterone receptors. In other words, the two are always interrelated and correlated, yet um, one doesn't really function without the other. So, you know, it, it gets a little more complicated, and we'll go over some of those details uh, in maybe an advanced session. But it, it, right now, the most important part about estrogen and progesterone, because based on that statement, it looks like you would increase your your estrogen, and then you would increase your progesterone receptors and life would be good. Um, but it doesn't quite work that way. Um, more, let's say that it alters progesterone receptors. And, uh, and so they're, they're always interrelated and it's pretty critical that you're addressing both at the same time rather than one or the other. Um, so estrogen stimulates inflammation. Okay. There's a, there's actually multiple mechanisms that estrogen stimulates inflammation. Um, even even the one that we discussed earlier, which was uh, an increase in water, which increases localized pressure, um, which can increase inflammation in the area or pain receptor sensitivity. Um, another, probably the most common way that you're going to see in today's society um, is that estrogen sensitizes the mast cell. And the mast cell contains... Um, inflammatory chemicals such as histamine. And so what you're finding is that people have a lot of these allergic reactions or these histamine reactions. And even to the extent that a lot of people are saying that they have histamine intolerance, 
which is also a symptom, but, but even in, in a severe case of histamine intolerance or mast cell disorders, estrogen plays a pretty critical role in sensitizing that cell. So um, we've all kind of seen um, a bubble that blows through the air that never seems to pop. And that's the kind of mast cell or uh, histochemical containing cells that we want. With excess estrogen, you're gonna find that you, you have the, the bubbles that you blow that just pop almost immediately, or as soon as you the, a little air gets on them, or the ones, you know, once again, there's bubbles that land on the ground and they stay there for a long time, and there's bubbles that, you know, as soon as they touch a, a blade of grass, they, they pop right open. And so what you want is the more robust, the more uh, resilient bubbles, if that makes any sense there. I guess I have too many kids and that's why I talk, talk about bubbles, but estrogen increases anxiety. Um, and that's kind of goes back to a lot of the how it interacts with the brain chemicals, the dopamine, the oxytocin. Um, and and those, those chemicals are, are altered by elevated estrogen, which can result in a state of anxiety. Now, the question is often, and this is what I want my, my, my patients and, and you guys to think about closely, is if you have elevated estrogen that creates anxiety, do you really have anxiety or do you just have elevated estrogen? And so this is kind of a, a chicken or the egg kind of question, but the reality is, when you have elevated estrogen, it would be expected that you'd have a mild increase in anxiety. And that mild increase in anxiety, um, you know, can end up getting you on another medication. I mean, it doesn't have to be mild. It could be very severe also if, if your estrogen levels are, are out of whack and your neurotransmitters have not been balanced properly. Uh, there can be a lot to it. But but let's say in the, in the typical mildly elevated estrogen case, it also increases anxiety and anxiety alters mood even if you don't have other neurotransmitter imbalances. So estrogen can become a very complex case because it interacts with the female brain so much. And, and, and likewise, it interacts with the male brain. Um, males just don't seem to store as much. So it's, it's a little bit harder to uh, motivate those changes. And not, not by any means is that a reason why, you know, males may have less anxiety, but, but they, they don't necessarily. So in today's world, uh, we're finding that while women often came up with these conditions early on, uh, maybe they've had them for 20, 30 years, and maybe we haven't even talked about them as a society, we're finding that men are starting to graduate into that and having, you know, just as many hormonal and chemical imbalances, um, as as females, so while estrogen is a problem, there's more to the hormonal story than this one little hormone. Um, estrogen creates headaches and migraines. Uh, definitely, we want to know that that in any case of migraines that I've seen in my office in a female, that estrogen was definitely elevated, and and it had to be addressed. Um, estrogen is the cause of most weight gain, insomnia, and depression. You'll see this in hormone replacement therapy, and I'm not going to talk too much about hormone replacement therapy right now. But I do want to say that if you add estrogen in the form of bioidentical hormones, you are going to see weight gain. And that, that's 100% of the time across the board. It's how estrogen works. And, and I'll take you back to the example of the, of the, the pregnant female um, to where, you know, you, you rarely, I'm not sure if I, I've seen a case, but I'm sure there's one or two. Um, you, you, you would almost never see a female get pregnant and then lose weight. Um, you're always going to see that that increases because of the increase in estrogen Estrogen is going to alter other hormones, which can relate to insomnia, um, as well as depression, which we talked about that dopamine and that reward system. If you never feel rewarded for your efforts, then obviously that's kind of a, a depressive instigating event. Um, so estrogen, find the balance. So if we go back to the, there was a lot of good things about estrogen. It is what makes a female who she is. Um, and, and then yet it has all these bad things. So the key to estrogen is finding the balance. We don't want to eliminate all estrogen, but we do want to make sure that it's in check with the other hormones. Um, so, so many times people will see like the list of, of uh, positive effects of estrogen and, and you may say, oh my gosh, if I just had more estrogen, I'd be so happy and I'd feel so wonderful. And to some degree, that may be true. On the flip side, you increase that estrogen. Maybe you have an awesome mood, but now you become super inflamed because it sensitizes that mast cell or that immune cell. And now you have lots of inflammation. So you're happy with like joint pain everywhere. You know, so that's where, the, that's where that balance comes in. So you can see the list of detrimental effects and then say, oh man, I better, I better get way less estrogen. And that may not be true either. So it's really about finding the balance with estrogen. And, um, 
Well, or all hormones will be this way. Um, estrogen is kind of one of the bigger players in this realm of, of finding, finding the perfect balance, not too hot, not too cold porridge. Uh, if you can think back to that example in a story, um, but this, this is one of the reasons, because estrogen is so sensitive, this is one of the reasons why doctors are honestly confused on how to treat hormonal imbalances. Um, I'm going to help you solve that puzzle, but it's it, you just have to accept that it's more complex than I need more or I need less. And you wouldn't have bought an online program that's going to go through the details of hormone balance if you were looking for a quick fix. Um, there's not going to be one pill that makes it all go away, though there may be a combination of seven or eight, or there may be a combination of lifestyle and supplementation that's going to help you there. Um, but but for now, what I want to say is just in general, most women are estrogen dominant, and that's that's across the board. Um, and, and we'll go over how do we measure that um, in another section um, and the reason why I don't really trust blood tests right now. Um, and, and so we'll go over that, but, but as of now, let's just assume that you have any of the symptoms on that bad list, then you can consider yourself estrogen dominant at the time and, and go ahead and go towards the treatment of estrogen dominance. Um, this elevated estrogen will create a ton of unpleasant symptoms and, and also worsen any other conditions. So say you're someone that has a gut disorder or a liver disorder or, um, headaches or migraines or any type of inflammatory disorder, which is pretty much anything that causes discomfort or pain, estrogen at an elevated level is going to irritate that and make it worse. So for now, that's all on estrogen. If you have any questions, go ahead and put them below and we'll see if we can get them all answered. Thanks a lot.